lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry, who swears he can talk better than that. <laughs> I can talk better than that. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, oh, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. See, I stole your opening line. Yeah, man. you did. You got me. Yeah. <laughs> you threw been stealing me. my lines all the time recently. Threw me off. Got to come up with something original. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> uh, uh, so. So what we sipping on over here, Mike? Um, this is Eagle Rare. I picked it out, so I figured. <laughs> it's good. I like it. Yeah. Um, this is the one that your uncles? Yes. Um, my, a couple of my uncles advocated are for. big, big fans of this one. Yeah. So um, Apparently, if you're buying from a military base, it's really easy yeah, to you get can, this. Yeah, you can get this one. Yeah, but, They were uh, going and buying it by the cases. <laughs> yeah, ABC, it's allocated. I have to fight for it every month. Yeah. Oh, it's good, like I said. And they usually, like most of the stores only get a case. Yeah. So, like, I... I don't usually actually manage to pick up a bottle. In fact, yeah. this is the only bottle I've ever picked up. I was going to say, this is a new one for you, right? Yeah. 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 You've had it before, but like we didn't open the bottle just now. But No, yeah, exactly. And I, I've I've had it before, too. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that I had it when I was up at the Whiskey Weekend thing. Yeah. But I had a lot of whiskey that weekend. <laughs> yeah, right? Not a whole lot stuck with you, right? Yeah. it's it, Like, I remember, I remember liking things. Yeah. What they yeah. were. <laughs> not not so much yeah <laughs> gotta take a notebook with you yeah well you know i always have a notebook in my pocket <laughs> and a pen in my pocket but uh you gotta take, writing stuff down gotta take a special notebook just for whiskey like at least on those type of endeavors write like, down tasting notes and stuff yeah. that way i look at it later when i drink it again on a different day when i'm in a different mood and i'm like hmm I didn't taste that at all this time <laughs> yeah well that and so you remember what you like yeah <laughs> for later there wasn't a lot that I didn't like, yeah. and I'm hoping that that Leaper's Fork barrel pick comes out soon. I, I've I've heard I've heard mention of it, yeah. In the last month or so, that it was finally gonna, gonna come available. Yeah. Of course, I, I have to my my friend that works at Leaper's Fork's just gonna have to hold on to the bottle for me because they can't <laughs> ship to Alabama, but. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, it would be nice to know it's in somebody's possession that I can get it from. That you will eventually see <laughs> like, again. Yeah, because yes. um, it was a good. Um, yeah, it was. It was definitely good. I they they gave us two options. This is totally uninteresting to some people. I know. <laughs> um, th they only gave us two options, which is a little weird for a barrel pick. Yeah. Uh, usually, you get more more choices, yeah. but um, they do uh, bourbon and Tennessee whiskey. Oh, okay. There. Yeah. You should remember. Yeah. You did well, that tour. I, I, I did the tour. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they gave us an option, one one of each. So the two options yeah. we had, there was a bourbon and there was a Tennessee whiskey. And we picked the Tennessee whiskey uh, by about two to one. Uh, it was like 100 people yeah. on this barrel pick. So um, we picked the Tennessee whiskey uh, almost two to one. And that's the one that I picked. Yeah. And I, I tell you, honestly... I could have not tasted it and picked that. Really? Why is like, that? I almost picked it just off of the nose. Oh, off the nose? Yeah. And it yeah. smelled so good. <laughs> so good. I thought it tasted better too. Um, yeah. There were some people that argued with me about that. I mean, yeah. obviously, like yeah. a third of the people thought that the <laughs> bourbon was better. Yeah. Uh, but um, but I, I, I told them, them too. I was like, look, I do think it tastes better, but honestly, I'd pick this off the nose. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Just like, like I could just open this bottle and and sniff yeah. like glue. You know? <laughs> right. Uh, doesn't work as well. It doesn't but... do anything for you, but it's <laughs> yeah. it's except put Make you it in feel a feel good. I was gonna say put you in a good mood, Make right? Feel good. Yeah. Uh, so we talked about First Amendment stuff last last week. Yeah. A lot. And we thought, hey, we may as well just like keep on down the line. Yeah. So. Maybe this is a good trim. We open up all the new the podcast the next couple of weeks with just with Bill of Rights stuff. Yeah, all right, and then kind of transition into some other stuff. I yeah, think that's a good format. Yeah, not, at least for a while. Bad. Well, until we run out of minutes. <laughs> yeah, then we start over again. <laughs> <laughs> then we go into the Constitution. That'll. Yeah. <laughs> we might have to end with the Constitution, like yeah. start off with other stuff and then talk about. Yeah. The, the actual form of our government, because that might be boring. Yeah, we can do that. But we'll see. Anyway, um, yeah, so we thought 
We can talk about Second Amendment. So which one is that again? That's the uh, <laughs> the militia being necessary to maintain. Ah, oh, that's right. That's the one that tells us that only the military can have guns. That's not what it says. <laughs> you got right. a Constitution app on your phone, right? Or, don't you? Uh, yeah, but it won't load. I guess load? Yeah, it's crazy, man. Yeah. Well, anyway, it says, uh, because the militia is necessary to maintain a free state, now I'm going to have, I don't have the words exactly right because <laughs> I don't remember it verbatim, but yeah. um, a militia being necessary to uh, a free state that the um, right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Shall yeah. not be infringed. So what you're saying is we're the militia. I didn't say that, but yes, that's that's what you're I mean, getting that, at. <laughs> that is true. Um, the The founding fathers saw the whole of the people as being the militia. Uh, essentially, what they were saying is that, um, in a roundabout way, they were saying that liberty can't be secure unless the people have the right to, to bear arms. Yeah, and they did this from experience because when the the British Empire decided that it wanted to enslave the colonies, essentially. Um, the first thing that they did was take away the right to bear arms. Yeah. It's like, you can't, you can't enslave a people if, if yeah. they have guns, if they're able to defend themselves. And, um, it's, you know, it's been like many of the, the, um, founding fathers made statements along the lines of that. This is to keep the government in check. Um, that, um, uh, that the government won't risk, oppressing its people if the people are armed yeah exactly um that it gives them a real incentive to stay on the right side of justice yeah and uh but it, like more importantly than that it like its roots in uh, um in natural law um in natural rights are essentially that the you know with the assumption that you own your life yeah and therefore your freedom and the property justly acquired and, and so forth. Yeah. Um, that the right to protect all those things, your life, your liberty, your property, uh, against any who would take it by the use of force is an inherent right. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Right. So if you have the right to, to these things, you have the right to protect and defend these things. Yeah. And... Um, and that's kind of the root. Now, the Second Amendment specifically is about protecting your liberty from uh, from tyranny, yeah, from the government. It's not even actually um, a self defense argument from robbers or whatever. Although I would say the natural rights argument is that yeah. that you should have the right to defend yourself and your property and your property yeah. and the people close to you yeah. and, and so forth. Protect others as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've always said, like, why do I carry a gun? I, I carry a gun because I want to have the ability to protect myself and the people around me. Yeah. Um, and, but for the Second Amendment, the question that I would ask people is, um, do you trust that for now and forever, yeah. that your government will never try to take your life, liberty, or property unjustly through the use of force? Yeah, I don't see how you can answer that question any other way, but you don't... Then the, no? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And if the answer is no, then the Second Amendment is a real important right. Yeah, and the answer has to be no, because the, the one of the big things you said there is, like, now and forever. Yeah. So even if all of the right people are in all the right places of government, which would never happen, but let's mm -hmm. just fantasize that all the right, that we had this just... Amazing government that we all trusted and loved. Jesus Christ in all positions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah, that you had that. You're not going to have that forever. Like, mm -hmm. that's the government's change, you know? Yeah, and I think that a pretty strong argument can be made that right now <laughs> the government <laughs> tries to take your life, liberty, and property by well, force yeah. unjustly. It already does, yeah. yeah. So, uh, taxation yeah. is theft. Exactly. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it, the, the answer, if your answer to that question is no, that you don't trust that the government will never try and take from you what it shouldn't take from you, yeah. which is, I mean, I, kind of prompts the question of what do you think that they should be able to take from you? But, <laughs> right. um, 
you know. How much of your stuff do they own? <laughs> <laughs> Question yeah. is, all of it. They let you keep a little bit. Well, that I mean, that's the the kind of the crazy thing right now. Anyway, is that do you really own anything? Yeah, it's. I mean, everything that you have. Essentially, the way your income works is that the government says, um, "This is all ours, but we'll let you keep a portion." Yeah. That you, we decide on. And you need to figure out what that portion is. Yeah. <laughs> or we're going to take you to jail. <laughs> yeah. Um, and even like all your properties, you have to pay for the privilege to use. Yeah. So my house, I'm paying property taxes. If I don't pay property taxes, then my property's taken away from me. My uh, car, I have to pay to uh, have it licensed to be on the road. Yep. If I don't pay to have it licensed to be on the road, it can be taken from me. So I, I, there's very little of my property, at least major assets, that are really mine. Yeah. Um, in fact, I would say none of my major assets are really mine. I have to yeah. pay for the privilege to use everything that's mine almost, except for like little knickknacks and things. Yeah. And even then you have to pay to acquire those. Well, yeah, but that's acceptable. A tax? What? You have to pay a tax to, to acquire oh, those. Oh, well, I mean, no. Okay. Um, I, I see what so you're, you're saying so now. So you're good but with with sales tax? No, I'm not. But that's that's a tiny portion of what you're paying to acquire things. Yeah. I mean, I, I thought you were trying to make the case that you shouldn't have to pay to acquire anything. Oh no, well, of course I was going to call yeah. you a communist and kick you out of the podcast. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Just the yeah, but you pay taxes on literally everything. And what really? So here's what really grinds. That's my not gears. true everywhere, though. It's not true everywhere. But the thing that really gets me with that is I could see almost see like a tax on new products. Like you buy a new car, you pay a tax on it. But you have to pay a tax on it every time it changes hands. Like that's that's what kills me. Last year I had to pay taxes on the gains that I'd made in the value of the property that I sold from the time I bought it till the time I sold it. Yeah, yeah. Good old capital gains tax. Yeah. Um, which I think is absurd. Oh, yeah, it's absolutely absurd. Yeah. yeah. So I, I got yeah. taxed on it over and over again. I got taxed on the income I used to purchase it in the first place. I got taxed on it when I purchased it. And I got taxed on it again based on the higher value that it was at when I sold it. Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, so anyway. Ah, um, taxes. <laughs> <laughs> but the point... The point to the Second Amendment is this: is that is that you have the right to defend um, your life, liberty, and property uh, yeah. by whatever means you deem necessary. Yeah. Um, whatever you think is the most effective way to defend those things, that w that's what you should have access to. And well, well, Trump says you shouldn't be able to have a bump stock. A lot of people say a lot of things, but there, <laughs> there's a, like a real strict limitation there in the Second Amendment. It says yeah. the, the right to, of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean uh, like infringed. It, it, you, don't, it don't, you don't have to take something away for the right to be infringed. Yeah. Limiting it is still infringing. That's it. an infringement. Absolutely yeah. it is. Um, so, you know, I, I know that people get upset when I say that I think that people should have the right to uh, to to any weapons that the government has access to. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, that comes from the idea that the government isn't a separate entity. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it has they no have, more rights than anybody else. Yeah, they don't have special rights. Yeah. Um, although they obviously do. Well, I mean, they obviously the, the, do, but the they The government is the, is, it does have the monopoly on the legal use of force. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what defines a government. Yeah. So by kind of by definition, they have rights that we don't have. Yeah. But, you know, my point with the Second Amendment is that any weapons that the government can possess, an individual should be permitted to possess. Yeah. Because the whole purpose of the Second Amendment here is for us to defend ourselves against our government. Yeah. Uh, so if you greatly limit um, the kinds of weapons that people can carry, normal citizens can carry, uh, as compared with the weapons that the government can carry. Um, now, in... In practical terms, it already is limited because, you yeah. know... Who has access to uranium? Yeah, well, and we don't have the money. Yeah. Uh, well, you don't have the money. <laughs> well, I don't... Yeah, right. I mean, I guess Elon Musk could build a small army if he wanted to, but it still couldn't compete with the U.S. military. I mean, they well, just yeah. passed a, an $886 billion um, military funding. Yeah. 
And, and that's not even all of it. Like that's, uh, that's direct department of defense, yeah. like well, Pentagon I mean, money. It, it, it doesn't include all the, the nuke stuff and, um, the VA, I don't think is part of that either. I yeah. mean, I think that the total spending on military <laughs> things in the U S is now like $1.3 trillion a year. Yeah. Well, when you can print your own money, you know, yeah, just fire up that printing press. Yeah. Um, and you can take what you need. Well, yeah, that's the other <laughs> thing. Yeah. Which is the point of having the second amendment, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, um, I, I do think that people should be able to possess any, any weapons that the military can possess that you, you can't give them, um, you know, special power. I mean, it, it would be like saying that, uh, if in a, another time, yeah. um, after firearms were developed, but, um, that the the government said, well, you know, we're not going to take away the right of the people to to bear arms. They can continue to um, carry axes and knives and, and so forth. Yeah, um, but not muskets. Oh, but not muskets. Yeah. Well, I was going to say that that. So only the government can can have swords and lances and muskets. Yeah. But we're not taking away the right of the people to bear arms. They can still carry axes and knives. Well, <laughs> you, you, can, you can still have the the weapons that were that were available when the document was written. <laughs> yeah, that, that are obsolete now. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Um, but it, it's been upheld that um, that military weapons can be possessed by people. Yeah. Oh yeah. And of course, then there even was though the, they're not like, I mean, uh, AR fifteen no. is not a military. No, not no. at all. Um, and realistically, like I said, people mostly don't. Yeah. Uh, but it does. It does provide a check on the government, and it provides a check on uh, on criminality as well. Yeah. And this is, you know, this is kind of a side effect of it. Is we talked about before, like, how do we? Um, limit school shootings that you can't you can't outlaw crazy right yeah. like there's yeah. you know there's not you can't stop all violence through legislation it just can't be done yeah um it's not even realistic but it it, it absolutely can't be done but you can limit the damage done yeah um and and limiting the damage done the way to do it really isn't by restricting more it's actually by granting more freedom yeah Make it less safe for a crazy gunman to walk into a place and start shooting things up. Yeah. It's, it's not necessarily going to stop them. I, I mean, I, yeah. I, I'm trying to be really plain and, and open about that. It's not going to yeah. necessarily stop them. But, um, but, it, but it limits. almost all of the big shootings have occurred in gun-free zones. Yeah. And I'm sure that that wasn't an accident that those were the places that were picked. No, of course it wasn't. And you so. remember a few years ago, um, there was the the guy that stopped the shooting at the church? Yeah, yeah. By shooting the guy who's going to do the shooting at the church? Yeah, or had started I want to say it was, that was in Texas, if yeah. it's the one I'm thinking of. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I've seen, you know, the I think it's the FBI statistics, but it's definitely the... Um, Department of Justice, uh, some aspect of the Department of Justice statistics that suggests that there's actually a whole lot more lives saved by people carrying guns than lives than cost. Yeah. 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 Um, but I, I really should have pulled those, I suppose, before. <laughs> I would have had to find them, though. That seems like a lot of work. Yeah. Um, and I've been busy. So, but they're out. Sorry, there. everybody. Like you can't find them. Yeah. Um. It, it is available. There are estimates of uh, the number of crimes prevented by people carrying guns. There's. It's a page on Facebook. I can't remember the name of it now offhand. But but that's kind of what they do. Is they just post. I, I forget what they call it. It's like the daily self defense or something. Mm -hmm. And it's basically they just go through local news stories where um where somebody was saved by another person who was carrying a gun. And like they just they just show like the reports of that. Um, it's really kind of neat. Yeah. So and they have plenty to report on. <laughs> like it's not like there's a shortage. So. Well, I you know I, I'm an Eagle Scout, so I always it's there's the be prepared. Yeah, yeah. Like it's it's one of those you know prepare hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Yeah. Like the best thing to do is to be ready for something terrible to happen. 
Yeah. And, and I'm not very big. I mean, like I'm, I'm in pretty good shape and I, you know, I was trained how to fight and, and so forth. Like I can, I can handle myself, Yeah. but I'm still like, I'm 150 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm like five, six, 150 pounds. And, and no matter how well trained you are, <laughs> yeah. like, you can be taken down. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I had a roommate years ago that was like six, four, three twenty or something like that. Yeah. Um, you know, we wrestled cause we're young men and we drank, yeah. but <laughs> right. And like I could put up a fight, but I couldn't beat him. Yeah, absolutely. Like you can only overcome so much. Yeah, <laughs> I like once he really got his weight on top of me, then I there wasn't a whole lot I could do. I would end up yeah. pinned eventually. Yeah. Like no matter how hard I fought. Yeah. Guns the great equalizer. I don't yeah. have to worry about that out on the street. Yeah. And, and out on the street, it matters. Like, oh, absolutely. Because yeah, your buddy drunk just, wrestling with my friend is yeah, like not he's a big just, deal. Once, once he pins you, you're done. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, the guy okay, on the that's street, it. you win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Give me a minute to catch my breath, smoke a cigarette. We'll get back to this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> guy on the street's not going to give you those liberties. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I remember talking to a friend of ours who's uh, going on about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. This is a total aside. Like, it's, total, it's not related to the Second Amendment. Um, but I think that we can accept that Brazilian jiu-jitsu is one of the higher forms of martial art. Yeah. Uh, more effective. Uh, and and I was always saying, well, you know, I'd, I'd rather train Muay Thai. And um, he said, oh, no, but I, I don't know why. Like, the Brazilian jiu-jitsu, like, it, you know, your size doesn't matter and so forth. I said, yeah, but, like, if I get in a fight in a bar, yeah. the last place I want to be is on the ground. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, like I, I just don't expect it to for everybody to step aside and let it be one on one. Right? Just, yeah, exactly. And once I'm on the ground, now I'm a sitting duck. Yeah. Now, now his friend's kicking me in the back. Yeah, while right? he's, you yeah. know. That's where all the feet are. I don't want to be down there. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's unrelated. Um, but yeah, so you know, your First Amendment is about your uh, your freedom of expression. Yeah. Um, to freedom to have your own thoughts, to uh, express them, to disseminate them, um, however you think best. Yeah. And the Second Amendment is about being able to defend yourself, specifically from your government, to defend your liberty. Yeah. Um, and maintain it uh, by whatever means that you feel is necessary. Yeah. No, I 100%, man. So is that a good Second Amendment coverage? I think so. All right. Um, then we can move on. So what else you got? I got a bunch of foreign policy stuff. Uh, the the main thing I think, okay, so you know we can talk about Ukraine some more if you want. But is I don't that, know that, is that still going on. It is. Um, I do think that they're trying to shift things a little bit. The yeah. narrative is changing some. Yeah. And uh, while there's been a bunch of Republicans in Congress that have been opposed to the intervention in Ukraine and spending all this money in Ukraine, a lot of them um, think that that money would be better spent in Taiwan. Yeah. Like they take, do. <laughs> take all that military aid, stop giving it to Ukraine, start giving it to Taiwan instead. It is funny to listen to them because they'll sound so good for a couple of minutes. Like, Oh, you know, make all the right points about the Ukraine and then immediately shift to, <laughs> to yeah. China. And it's like, Oh my God. It's like, you just forgot everything you just said. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, so the, uh, there, uh, there's a couple of things to address with this. Uh, let me start with it. since 1979, when the U S normalized relations with China, um, the U S has sold weapons to Taiwan. Yeah. Okay. Have, That's have just always, what we do. Yeah. We, we've, yeah. we've always sold weapon to the U S is the biggest arms dealer in the world. Yeah. There you go. Uh, and this is another example. However, um, in the NDAA, the 2023 national defense authorization act funds the military. Yeah. Uh, there was a billion dollars slated um, to Taiwan uh, as part of the presidential drawdown authority, um, which is the U.S. giving weapons from its own stockpile to Taiwan. And wow. they uh, last week, or maybe it was earlier this week, but I think it was the end of last week, uh, the U.S. announced that they're sending the first $345 million aid package, weapons package, uh, to Taiwan. Yeah. This is new. Okay. Okay. So this is different. We used to sell 
weapons to Taiwan. Now we're giving them. So yeah, there's a difference between them paying us for them. Yeah. And then us just like, oh, here they come. Yes. <laughs> and China definitely sees this as an escalation. Oh, they should. Yeah. All right. So, but then um, it was reported this week in the Financial Times that in the next um, supplemental funding bill for the Ukraine war, that the White House is going to ask Congress to include military aid to Taiwan. Yeah. Um, and this is this is one of those funny ones. The, the supplemental funding bill and this kind of military aid package. What this is, is the, the U.S. government giving taxpayer money to another country to buy American weapons. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, that's... That's absurd. <laughs> yes. So it's just privatizing public funds. They're taking yeah. your money that they took from you through taxes. Yeah. They're giving it to Taiwan and Ukraine yeah. for Taiwan and Ukraine to buy American weapons from American military contractors. Yeah. Like Northrop Grumman and um, General Dynamics. And Why don't we uh, just cut out the middleman? <laughs> I mean, uh, the, it seems it just there's seems, no difference. Yeah. Well, I mean, we have to look. We have to let the uh, the administrators in these other countries take their their cut their off cut. the top. Uh, well, there you go. That that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. the middleman is important here. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah. what would be the point? Exactly. <laughs> like they might just buy from somebody else if they didn't get a piece of the action. Well, there you go. Yeah. Um, but our stuff is so much better. But here here's another thing about the this these. Emergency supplemental funding bills. Um, they are outside the debt ceiling deal. Oh, really? They don't count towards the the limit uh, on the, the, debt? the debt ceiling limit. That's yes. interesting. Yes, they're separate. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's another thing. So this is again why the debt ceiling agreement meant nothing is that they have a whole lot of um, methods and tricks and other malarkey to get around it and continue to spend more money than they're allowed to spend because this doesn't count towards that. <laughs> right. Um, and yeah, so this supplemental funding bill yeah. uh, will send more money to Ukraine and to Taiwan so that their officials can take their cut off the top and then pay American companies for weapons. And while that may sound good, like, well, at least, and, and actually, I don't remember somebody recently, it might've been Blinken or Sullivan, but it, it may have been somebody farther down the chain actually like came out in, in a press briefing or something recently and said, well, no, but you don't understand like this money. We're not just like giving money to, to Ukraine, uh, this money, um, they're buying American weapons. So this money is actually going into the U S economy. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that that's true. And there's a small percentage of people that benefit from that yeah. while the rest of us pay for it. Oh, absolutely. And if you work for one of these military companies, you know. You're probably hey. not getting anything extra, actually. Well, you're probably, it's just you're like, not getting anything extra, but at least your company is solid. Like, yeah, you it's know. the executives that are that are actually benefiting from yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Um, and probably distributors as well and, you know, various banks that where the money goes first. And I, yeah. I don't know if you'll remember this. This is something that I, I think gets left out of people's calculations when when they're figuring out who's benefiting from these things. Because you may remember years ago, I uh, actually, it was while we were doing the podcast, something about the Paris Accords came up yeah. on the podcast. And I was talking about how, um, you know, all these people were benefiting financially from the Paris Accords, that it was a, a big money transfer again. Yeah. And one of our friends was like, who's making money off of this? <laughs> yeah. And I said, well, you're talking about billions of dollars. Well, the first thing that's happening is it's going to a bank. Yeah, all right. <laughs> and I promise you, they're making money off of that money. Oh, yeah. Because they're putting 10% of it aside, reinvesting 90% of it, creating money out of nothing, because that's what the fractional reserve banking system allows. Yeah. Um, and then lending that out to people for a price. Yeah. And making money off of that. Absolutely. <laughs> so, Yeah. Every time there's a huge transfer of money, bankers are making out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, oh, well, they're not making out, but they're 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 winning. Yes, <laughs> they, they're probably making out. Well, that may be like I mean, I you got a lot of money to spend. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, they're probably paying to make out. Could be, or you could just throw down a couple hundred dollar bills on the bar when you sit there. I mean, like that draws attention. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> All right, still paying though. Really? Yeah. 
But it's, you know, it's taxpayer money. <laughs> it's taxpayer money, so who cares, right? <laughs> or it's just created money out of nothing. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Um, I remember, so I actually saw a statistic on this recently, and I'm trying to think of exactly how it broke down. And it was something like, for every $100 that gets put in a bank, $900 is created out of nothing. I saw something recently that kind of went along those same lines. I don't remember specifically. Like, it was like a breakdown of how the money... It, this The one I saw was actually an argument for cash. But it was the know. same style thing, like, for every... what for How the money gets into the system when you use cash versus mm -hmm. how you when you use your card. Okay, well, this was on the line of um, when you put $100 into the bank, uh, the bank takes 90 of it and lends it out to somebody else. Yeah. Who puts it in a bank, and then they take 81 of those $90 and give it out to somebody else. Yeah. Who puts it in a bank, yeah. and then they keep 810, and they put the rest of it out, lend it out to somebody else. And so... So on and so forth. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. On the whole, every $100 that gets put in the bank, $900 gets created. Yeah. I think that was the number, and I'm not going to do all the math here to... To figure, figure it out. Figure that out. But yeah. um, anyway, that's that's the idea. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, um, $345 in weapons, or $345 million in weapons is being given to Taiwan, and now... Um, they're also asking for more money to be given to them so that they can buy American weapons. Yeah. So a lot now, of weapons going into yeah. Taiwan is the point here. Now we're yeah, but now we're not just selling them weapons. We're giving we're, them. We're to subsidizing them. them and we're giving them weapons. Yeah. Uh, and the and China sees this as a as a big um, escalation. They should. Yes. Uh, and you run into the same problem that you run in ran into in Ukraine, which is. Every time the U.S. gets more involved militarily, the response is to also increase military action. Yeah. So um, the more militarily involved the U.S. became in Ukraine, the more militarily motivated the Russians became around yeah. Ukraine. Well, and yeah. the same thing happens in China. Yeah. So they have already launched new military drills after the $345 million was announced. Yeah. Um, and I suspect that when they actually pass this aid package, uh, that we'll see a bunch more military drills from China around Taiwan again. Yeah. Um, making it clear that they don't approve. Yeah. And I, I just don't understand the, uh, the foreign policy philosophy here. I, I don't get why the Biden administration has decided to antagonize the other major <laughs> nuclear power in the world. Yeah. And this is the one that really gets me is like, it's not bad enough that we've got everything going on with Russia. Mm -hmm. Like we've got to do it with the other one too. Yeah. Like, and all of this pushes Russia and China closer together. It does. Which doesn't benefit us in any way. No, no, it doesn't. Um, it, it would have been perfectly acceptable to have a tripolar world. Yeah. Like it, it doesn't really harm us. This, yeah, and maybe well, it comes down to the fixed pie fallacy, like this idea that anything that they are benefiting from, we're no longer benefiting from. But yeah. but that's not how an economy works. Yeah. Well, and of course, of, I, I mean, our government has certainly proven that they don't really understand how an economy works. So well, I, yeah. But at the end of the day, like if you were gonna, if you were gonna push to have a big government like what we have, mm -hmm. it its interest should be in building and maintaining our economy. Like that's what you would want. Like not yes. not in. I don't want them to do that. Well, I don't, they don't know what I don't, they're doing. I don't want them to do that either. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, if we're gonna have this big intrusive government the way we do, mm -hmm. it should at least be doing stuff overseas to benefit the people of the U.S. in some way. Well, they say that's what they're doing. Well, that's what they say, but the, we, everybody knows that's not what's going on. Even the even the people who are doing it don't believe that. Like. Oh. They're um, making sure that we have a good, solid, steady supply of oil. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. How's that's that? That's what they've been doing for twenty years. Yeah. And well, protecting us from terrorism. Yeah. Well, that's that's the big one. <laughs> okay, so that actually is a that transitions us. <laughs> yes. Um. So there, an article came out at military.com, an op-ed, I suppose it was, by a uh, retired lieutenant colonel Plinsler. I don't know how to say anything. Anyway, and he was advocating a, a new draft. Yeah. Um, 
to make up for the um, shortfall in military recruitment. Yeah. And he's saying that, you know, over the last 20 years of war that we haven't won any of, um, that kids are no longer signing up to join the military. And the military can't fill its ranks with just a volunteer military anymore. Yeah. So what we need to do is we need to institute a draft to make up for the shortfall. Yeah. And his proposal was essentially that, well, you know, recruiters do what they do for most of the year. 11 months is what he said, actually. Yeah, he for said 11 that. months of the year, recruiters do what they do. And in the last month of the year, we calculate how many soldiers we wanted and how many soldiers we got. And then we draft the difference. Yeah. That the whole, I mean, I'm no longer draft age, obviously. I have two daughters that. That doesn't matter. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> but my, my point is, is it still scares the crap out of me. Yeah. Like just the thought of that, like mm-hmm. that, that, that could be a thing. Well, uh, you know, if you go back to liberty issues, that's obviously a real serious issue. Yeah. Uh, a little bit. The conscription is, is slavery. It's just, a, it's a form of slavery. It's no different than the chain gangs out there in prisons or anything else. It's, it's a form of slavery. Yeah. Uh, you have no choice in the matter. You're sent off. It doesn't matter. The, the difference between a slave and an employee is not a paycheck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> the, the difference between a slave and an employee is the, is, is choice. Yeah. It's, it's interesting you mentioned that because a lot of people like don't make that don't equate that the way you just put mm-hmm. like not, the difference isn't if whether you got paid or not. It's mm-hmm. the, the difference is whether you made the choice to do it or didn't. Yeah. You know, and I, I can already hear a bunch of people on the left screaming. Well, a lot of people have jobs that they didn't get to choose because they just had to have a job to pay their bills and they don't like the job, but they can't leave the job because they've got no choice. Well, but they do. There's always a choice. Yeah. And that's something I, I like, I tell, I tell people that all the time um, because I, I hear not exactly that argument, mm-hmm. but I get that argument a lot. Well, I was just put in a situation and I had no choice. There is always a choice. Now they may not be good choices. Like yeah. They, oh, yeah. <laughs> they, they may all be bad choices and fair. Yeah. But there is a choice. Yeah. And sometimes that ba- that one that seems like the bad choice, maybe it's not as bad as the alternatives. Mm-hmm. The alternative you chose. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it's the one you picked for some reason. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that that's one of those things that just irritates me. Well, it's, it's that victimhood mentality. It, yeah. You know, I don't have control of my life and, yeah. and you know, so forth. And, and I, I can understand that in... But I can't respect it. Yeah. I mean, I can understand that if the government came and said, you have to come join the military. Well, yeah, but I did. No, I'm talking about that victimhood <laughs> mentality. Yeah, though, no, so. I get what you're yeah. saying. But, but but going back to the conscripting thing, like, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I mean, you even if the if you get drafted and you have to come with us now, mm-hmm. like, there's still a choice. Like, you can resist that. That's true. Like, I mean, it, that's... It's not the same kind of choice, though. It's not the same kind of choice. No, because it's not the right choice. Yeah, like, it's, I mean. it's, you know, it's imprisonment. Um, okay, so here's the difference is the use of force, I guess. Yeah, well, exactly. You know, you, you took the job that you hated and you stay there because you need it to get by or whatever. Yeah. But you weren't, like, there's nobody, there's, there's nobody literally holding a gun to your head to do it. Yeah, or going to put you in jail if you don't. Yeah. You know, we, yeah. we don't have debtors prison anymore. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's of course, just like the moral argument against conscription, but there were so many things in this article that, <laughs> uh, they were kind of delusional. Yeah. I, I thought, um, now the most important thing I think to point out is that he says, okay, well, you know, the economy's really good. We've got nearly full employment, so there's less, Military recruitment. Yeah, um, and he said that there was some kind of correlation between when um, when when employment's good and when employment's down as far yeah. as recruitment goes. That's probably true. Oh, I'm sure it is. Mm-hmm. All that tells me, though, is if, if you're having that much trouble recruiting people, you just need to pay them more. Because there's a price. Like, I mean, the truth is... Yeah. Uh, the truth is, is, I mean, it's not like they don't have unlimited funds to do all this anyway. Exactly. Like, if they well, really want to... they're re- already bribing kids. Well, you're already bribing them. You just up the bribe till you get the amount of people you want. Yeah. I mean, there's all the, the college courses payment and job training that they oh, yeah. offer and, like, all kinds yeah. of... I mean, 
um, the the benefits uh, are are how they draw people in yeah. and that you're not going to spend a lot of money. That was always like a big oh, thing yeah. when I was young about the military. Like, okay, well you get paid. It's not the greatest pay, but you don't have any chance to spend it. Yeah. Like you're just collecting money while you're <laughs> in, <laughs> yeah. in the military essentially. Yeah. Um, cause the, you know, you're mostly just taken care of. Like yeah. you don't have to pay rent. You, you don't have yeah. to pay for food. The only time you you, to... You're spending the money is when you're, you're using your off time duty. off. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Um, so, you know, there's uh, there's a lot of a lot of ways to draw people in with various benefits, and and they've been using that for a long time. Yeah. Um, but the thing that really got me about this was that like it never occurs to this guy, or at least it's not in the article anywhere. Yeah. The idea that well, you know, we could probably get by with the number of recruits that we actually get if we weren't trying to maintain a global empire. Yeah. Well, exactly. Like, if we didn't feel compelled to have military bases in 80 countries of the less than 200, yeah, fewer than 200, yeah. um, then, you know, maybe we wouldn't, maybe we could get by with the number of recruits that we get. Exactly. <laughs> um, there's also... The <laughs> but you have to remember, we haven't had another 9-11 since we started the war on terror. That was our transition, wasn't it? I was yeah. trying to think of what it was. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you've got to consider that. So what we're doing is working. Yeah, he did say that in the article. And I, I, oh, man, this argument always, <laughs> always gets me. Yeah. And my response always is, well, when was the 9-11 before 9-11? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't think you're making the argument that you think you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> like, wow, we've managed, because of all these terror wars that we launched after 9-11, we've managed to prevent another 9-11. Yeah. Yeah, but we didn't have all the terror wars before 9-11, and there weren't any 9-11s before 9-11 either. Yeah. So, Although the truth is that we were bombing the Middle East We were in the process decades. of creating that 9-11. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we had continued to bomb Iraq that entire, like, all through the 90s. Yep. Uh, and uh, it, in Osama bin Laden's, what, what do they call the, uh, the word just slipped my mind. Um Anyway, His the manifesto. declaration of war. No, oh, yeah. Um, he said it was uh, for supporting Israel um, yeah. and for uh, you know keeping troops in the Holy Land. We had bases in Saudi Arabia from which they were launching attacks into Iraq. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah that so it didn't come out of nowhere. Yeah. It's not well, that it's not that we were all nice and peaceful and they suddenly decided that they hated our freedoms. <laughs> yeah, like right. we were told. That's not yeah. how it actually worked. Yeah, the way that played out was so crazy because I remember after, like, I I live, I mean, obviously I'm old enough to live through this. Mm -hmm. Like, after 9-11, yeah, it was... you graduated high school in, the, in 2001. In 2001, right? yeah. Yeah, and the, the big thing after was, like, why do they hate us? Well, like, we didn't understand, like, why they hate us. And then the media immediately came out and was like, they hate us for our freedom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're going to pass the Patriot Act and take all that freedom away. Yeah. Like, that's literally how yeah, it played exactly. out. Like, that was, I watched that happen in real time. Mm -hmm. So, oh man. Yeah, there were a lot of uh, taking free. We, we want to make sure that they don't hate us anymore. Yeah, exactly. We're just, like, so we're just going to take all your freedoms. Away. Yeah. Meanwhile, we're going to start a war in another country. Um, what was some of the? Oh, uh, there was another thing in there. He says uh, by instituting a draft, you'll you'll get more involvement from the American people as a whole in military matters. Yeah. Um, that they'll they'll put more emphasis that and be more involved in in foreign policy because it could affect them yeah um and that you know the the draft will ensure because you know right now only poor people join the military because they don't have any other options and if you institute a draft then um it'll affect both the rich and the poor yeah and i was like yeah, yeah how, like how, last how, time we had a draft i was gonna say how has that worked out historically yeah um <laughs> Because when we had a draft before, one of the big complaints is that only the poor people yeah. still went to war. Yeah. A lot of bone spurs out there. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, college and, um, uh, you know, senators making phone calls. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so forth. If you didn't have the juice, you were going to Vietnam. But if you did, yep. you didn't have to go. And that, why he thinks that would be any different now. No, oh, it, it absolutely wouldn't I, be. I'm not sure. Um so, but the, the, the thing that I wanted to really 
the reason I wanted to bring up this draft thing is not that I'm taking it seriously. I don't think that, I mean, I think that he was serious about what he was proposing, but it makes you start to question why are they considering reinstituting a draft? Yeah. And, and of course, like another thing that I do want to point out about that though, too, is if you're like, you're having trouble with recruitment and he's saying, well, you know, we've had 20 years of war and we haven't won anything. Well, but that's not really the issue. I, I don't think the issue is that people don't feel like the war that we're involved in wars that matter to us. Yeah. And that I think that if people felt like if they joined the military, they were defending the United States. You wouldn't have to ask them to join. They yeah, you wouldn't it. have trouble with recruitment. I mean, there's only yeah. going to be so many people that want to do this still, but yeah. um, you wouldn't have trouble with recruitment. The problem is that that people see the wars that we've been involved in and see them as pointless. Yeah. And that they didn't benefit the United States. Well, and, and, and they talk to the people that came back from some of these wars. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's my personal experience is a lot of the people that were in Iraq and Afghanistan, like they, you come back and you talk to them and they're like, dude, like this is not what it's said it is on the TV. Yeah. It's <laughs> like, not what I signed up for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. I thought I was going to, you know, defend the Constitution and protect our liberties. And that's not what I was doing at all. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, so if you, yeah, if you use the military for what the military should be used for, I don't think that you'd have a problem with recruitment. Yeah. Um, but I, I bring this up mostly after, you know, following up the Taiwan thing, because this is what the United States government is preparing for. Yeah. I, I think is that they're, they're starting to, they're trying to get us used to the idea, um, of a draft again, because there's no way they could prosecute a war against China. Even a proxy without war it. through Taiwan, I think. Yeah. Without, um, without a draft, they yeah. need a whole lot more people than they've got. Oh, absolutely. And so, um, the I don't know. It's just it. It frightens it's, me. It's interesting because you're right. Like this subject has came up, and you hear it more and more since things have started to flare up with Taiwan again. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, both those two have kind of in sync came together. And and I don't think it's an accident. Like, I don't think that that's just like coincidence yeah. that this keeps coming up all of a sudden. Yeah, and, um, and you have this feedback loop of escalation that I was talking about earlier where uh, the U.S. Um, gives a bunch of military aid to Taiwan, something that they hadn't done before, and China reacts by running military drills, and the U.S. says, see, this is why we need to defend Taiwan, and they give more weapons and, and money for weapons to Taiwan. Yeah. And China says, well, if you're going to be giving them all these weapons, we need to start really preparing for something here. And Taiwan is, or China has always maintained that they, they absolutely want to reunify, yeah. but they want to do it peacefully. Yeah. But they've never ruled out the use of force. Yeah. So if we have to, this is what we'll do. Yeah. Um, but daring them to yeah. is not the is not the right approach no and what does it matter to us yeah i mean you can talk about chips factories or whatever but our biggest trading partner in the world i think is china well yeah exactly so do we think we're not going to get those chips if china yeah like we're we're getting the chips <laughs> yeah I mean, they... I mean, not if we go to war with them, but... <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. You know, short but, of that. I mean, but that's that's exactly the problem, right? Is that yeah. the um, the government looks at it as like, okay, if China controlled these chip factories and we were dependent on China to get these chips, well, then we couldn't go to war with them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have to become chip independent. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so uh, I, I don't know where this is going. I mean, I, I hope that... I hope that in a year and a half we have somebody with more sense in the White House. Yeah. Um, and I wish that our Congress would do something useful. Yeah. Like, of course, like, it's like exercise its ability. To, yeah, exercise its own power. Yeah, exactly. Um, but they ab they abdicated that long ago. Yeah. They don't want to be on the record for anything. Yeah. Um, because that being on the record for anything jeopardizes their chances of being reelected and being able to turn their $1 million net worth into $7 million in a few years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can't jeopardize that. No. Um, cause they're, they're ruled by self-interest and, and this is one of those things that, that I, I keep coming back to with the dangers of government. 
And that's that people are self-interested. Yeah. Period. You're not taking that out of them. Yeah. I mean, and I'm not even saying that it's nefarious. I don't think that they're going in there saying, well, I'm going to screw my constituents over to my own gain. I'm just saying when push comes to shove, they're, they're going to worry about of, themselves first. Yeah, taking care of number one. Yeah. And so the more power you give to a government, like the, the better they're able to exercise that to their own gain. Yeah. And the answer is to decentralize. Take Absolutely. the power away from that government. Yep. Th there's no other answer. It's not, there's no more legislation that helps. It doesn't help to give them more power, to give them more, to make more rules that yeah. can be manipulated by these same group of people. Yeah. There's always a workaround. Mm hmm like uh, an emergency supplemental funding bill. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that doesn't count against the debt ceiling. Right. And the agreement we made to make sure that we don't spend more money than we have. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's funny that that goes underneath the debt ceiling, but stuff like schools and parks <laughs> and like stuff that people actually use of the government, yeah. you know, that stuff never floats below the, the debt ceiling. Well, I mean, just think, like, even now when you're getting close to a $6 trillion budget. Yeah. Like, still a quarter of it goes to the U.S. military. Yeah. It's insane. It just shows what our priorities are. Yeah. Got to police the world. You know, and, and then you you get into discussions with people like, well, you know, if you didn't pay taxes, then we wouldn't have all these highways maintained. Like, well, have you ever actually looked at how much money the federal government spends on roads? Have you drove on those roads? Actually, roads, ports, it's like all kind. <laughs> like it's yeah. all um, transportation infrastructure. They only spend like $145 million, I think. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, it's, it's well, some I tiny, tiny I believe number. it driving on some of these interstates. Like. Yeah, it's, it's a tiny, tiny number. Tiny number. Um, like they could stop spending that and you wouldn't even notice. <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly. Well, it would do nothing for the the debt. Like it, you're not. Well, fixing. but he, here's the other thing: is that like they could triple the amount of money they spend on that stuff. And it wouldn't. And you wouldn't pay any extra tax. Yeah, <laughs> like right? it's such a small <laughs> drop. Yeah. That it wouldn't even bucket. it wouldn't even affect you. Like you wouldn't. Like man, they're suddenly spending all this money, and now I'm paying all these extra tax. Like you wouldn't even notice it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right, so we can wrap up there. I think. Um, just, uh, you know, everybody keep an eye out. Like well, the whole world is not an enemy of ours. Yeah. That's, uh, that's the main thing. And uh, like wars are always started by governments. They're between governments. It's yeah. the government of this country doesn't like the government of that country, but the people here aren't bothered by the people in China or the people in Russia. Exactly. I don't have any beef with them. It's yeah. like uh, Muhammad Ali said when he got drafted. He's like, uh, you know, no, um, no Viet Cong ever did anything to me. Yeah, right. <laughs> Such a great quote. Great <laughs> quote. Yeah. Um, yeah. One more thing just about the draft too. Like, so this is kind of being floated out there and you know this as well as I do and our listeners do too. Like anything that's floated out there and gets a whole bunch of pushback, they'll reel it back in. Mm -hmm. And so like just... That's one of the reasons I want to talk about it on the podcast. Like, just there needs to be some pushback against this one. Like, yeah. this, this is a big one. Like, you know, just just to be against and yeah. not to just jump on board with, you yeah. know. Let them reel it back in and throw it back out there in a couple of years. Yeah, well, exactly. We can fight about it again then. Exactly. Yeah. So, it's just, it's important though. Yeah, it is. It is. So, like, if you if you want to be the country that personifies freedom... You know, you got to have some. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> uh, that go good on a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write it down. I like it. All right. Um. So we'll be back next week when I guess we're covering the third amendment, probably the fourth amendment too. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, it depends on what other news we have, I suppose. Um. Wait, next week. Yeah, we oh. should be. We may have something next week, something special next week, but we don't know. For, what, what? No, yeah, we may have something. Yeah, we may have something special next week. We may not do the Third Amendment at all yeah. next week. We'll have um, to see. We'll but see. yeah, we expect to be back next week anyway. Yeah, yeah, we'll be um, back. We'll see when and what day. Yeah. Well. So, so keep your eyes open. It'll probably still be Thursday. Okay. Kind of no matter what. Okay. Fair enough. Unless it's Friday. 
<laughs> which it could be. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was actually thinking of the next week I was supposed to be out of town, but I'm not going to be now. Yeah, we're going to be coming changed. up on some, you're going out of town, I'm going but out I'm of town. But I'm not in August now. Oh, you're not? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that got canceled, I was telling you last night. Uh, that's uh, the right. schedule's changed. That's right. That's so, right. Well, um, I may be going out of town. Yeah, so. but that's the following week, I think. It is, yeah. It's right. still a couple of weeks away. I might still do a podcast. You never know. You should. So Yeah, because here's the thing, right? Like, if I go out of town, you're not yeah. getting a podcast. Yeah, right. Probably, unless well, I do unless it myself. You do one, yeah. Unless you do a road show. Yeah. yeah. You're not getting any solo Liberty Larry podcast. That's what no, I'm saying. No, yeah, that ain't happening. Because <laughs> he's lazy. It's true. <laughs> Can't help it. Been that way all my life. Yeah. All right. So we'll be back next week. Um, in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook. You can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean. Uh, like and share, comment, subscribe, tell your friends, all that other stuff. Everything, all the interaction helps us. Um, and we really appreciate it. And you can always email me at michael at thelibertymike.com if you've got uh, questions, comments, suggestions, etc. Or if you just want to say hi. Yeah. I don't mind. He likes that too. I do. I like to know that people are listening. Makes Absolutely. me feel better. Yep. That I'm I'm not, you know, wasting however many hours of my week every week. Screaming into the void. Yeah. Well, and all the reading and stuff too, which I'd probably do a lot of it anyway. But I might focus differently yeah. if I didn't have a podcast today. It's fair. So, um, but we'll, yeah, you'll hear from us again next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Thank you.